It's the smartphone operating system dominating the global market, Android. Over 70% of the world's mobile telephones are currently running it. The latest version, Android 12, is one of the most ambitious updates in its history. It's also, unfortunately, plagued by bugs. Google attributes this to the comprehensive rehaul. It's just as likely, however, a late consequence of Android's original brief, to be flexible, open-source software, able to adapt to the requirements of telecommunications companies and smartphone manufacturers alike. That intended flexibility has now resulted in an array of different versions. How did Android get where it is today? And more importantly, what pros and cons has that entailed? While most users think Android is Google's operating system, that's mostly just clever marketing. Google uh, launched Android as an open source software, and it launched it with several different companies uh, that are part of the Open uh, Handset Alliance, and all of them can make changes uh, to the Android uh, source code. But Google is sort of like the manager on top of everything. So anything that gets developed in the background, anything that gets uh, uh, like contributed by the others has to be approved by Google before it's being distributed to back to everyone else. Android being developed as open source software was the key factor in its phenomenal success. Companies worldwide were offered a serviceable operating system for mobile devices, which they could adapt to their own product's requirements with little effort. Phone manufacturers and telecommunications companies made good use of that. Samsung and Sony smartphones, for instance, are running their own customized versions of Android. But what's in it for Google? Google does offer Android free of charge, just without Google's mobile services, the so-called GMS package. GMS includes Play Store and other Google services, such as Gmail and Google Maps. Should a company wish to integrate Google's services into their own Android operating system, they'll need a license to do so. If a manufacturer wants to just install the Google Play Store, they have to agree to a whole series of things, which include also installing Chrome, YouTube, and a few other apps, and also making sure that the uh, Google search app uh, is the default search app, and also making sure that Chrome is the default browser. In addition to the wide array of Google-branded apps, Google also supplies the application programming interfaces, or APIs, required to run other popular apps. Without taking on the full Google package, other apps' functionality can be impaired. Still, not all manufacturers sign up to that. In China, where many of Google services aren't even available, you'll find plenty of Android smartphones without Google apps. Amazon, who use the Android-based Fire OS operating system, deliver their own devices without pre-installed Google Apps. Be that as it may, Google Play Store is still the place most Android users go to download new apps. As such, Google is a gatekeeper to app developers, making money off their products. Whenever a developer has a paid app, paid game, paid book, or for example, paid movies, uh, as well as any in-app purchase you can make if you're buying coins for your game, if you're adding some small feature to your app uh, when you're using it and you're paying for it, Google is getting a cut. On the whole, the Android open source operating system offers many advantages. Google can earn billions through their Play Store, device manufacturers get an operating system they can customize for their needs, and users get an open system which supports a range of apps and is compatible across a variety of devices. In an open system, in which hundreds of companies each have their own versions, one thing is especially tricky – providing regular security updates for all those different versions. Around the whole world, you have so many devices running Android, you have so many companies releasing Android versions. Not all of them are doing their job of keeping up to date with security patches, so yes, there will be vulnerabilities. For its Pixel phones, Google itself guarantees three yearly security updates. Another annoyance, the bloatware. The apps and services that manufacturers pre-install on their own versions of Android and which cannot be removed. They're gonna put YouTube, they're gonna put Chrome, uh, the Google search app, Google Maps, uh, and a few more. They have to put these, but then manufacturers, they wanna do their own thing, obviously. So uh, someone like Samsung, they will release their own browser Aside from Chrome, they will also put different apps that do the same thing as, as Google's apps, and you will have two of 
anything at the same time. And then you have carriers on top of that. And carriers sometimes will add their own apps and their own bloatware. That amounts to a lot. Were you aware of that? Which bloatware annoys you the most? Let us know in the comments. Despite Android being conceived of as free software, it provides a lot of power to one business, Google. Or more precisely, its parent company, Alphabet. The most impressive demonstration of how crucial Google Apps have become is what happened to Huawei. In the course of the China-United States trade war, Chinese smartphone manufacturer Huawei came under fire. In May 2019, then-President Donald Trump issued an executive order banning US companies from working with foreign telecommunications companies, deeming them a national security risk. Google subsequently declared that it would no longer make its digital products available for use by Huawei. Even though Huawei was able to continue using Android, the prospect of going without Google's apps led Huawei to develop its own operating system. At the time of the ban going into effect, Huawei was the second largest smartphone manufacturer in the world. Now, without GMS Android, the manufacturer is no longer a major player on the international stage. Huawei survived, but it's like it's uh, just a shadow of its own uh, of its past self at this point. Uh, it had to take a long while to develop its software again, and it's, it had to take a long while to um, to bring uh, all of the big apps into its own app store. What are your thoughts on Android? What do you like about the operating system, and what bothers you? Tell us about it in the comments.